Hello, hello everybody. It is Pip here from QueenPipCards.com and I am, oh, I forgot to get the stamp set out, didn't I? Typical. <laughs> what have I forgotten today? There's always something. <laughs> okay, so let's start that again, shall we? It's Pip here from QueenPipCards.com. Welcome to my Moody Monday Facebook Live uh, where we talk about things that are here to make you smile. So, <laughs> Uh, I am Pip, also known as Queen Pip, and I run QueenPipCards.com, and I have the ability to provide you with the most amazing stamping up products, uh, but also some fun creativity and hopefully some helpful hints and tips. So today I am focusing on the Snailed It stamp set. That's this one, okay, because it's fun and we love it. Uh, I keep coming back to it no matter what I have in my stash. This one always seems to draw me to it. Um, hi, Steph. We're also going to be using some watercolour pencils. OK. Um, a memento ink pad, in case you want to follow along at home. And some bright cardstock and some ordinary basic white cardstock. OK. Stay with me um, all the way through. I have some exciting things to show you. I have a new fancy fold to show you. I have um, just lots of different cards to show you. So hang about and stay with me as we go through today's video. But first, I'm going to concentrate on some basic cards. For those of you out there who are new to card making, and all of this is a complete mystery and myth, and you don't understand any of it, I'm going to show you some really simple cards that can get you going based on colours that are in this water uh, pencil, watercolour pencil set. OK, so down here, see all these different colours. And on the back of this, it tells you what all those different colours are. And there's quite a few in here that are part of the Brights family colour range. OK, so Stamping Up has loads of different colour family ranges. There are four family ranges, plus some in colour ranges. And I like to always start new beginners, new card makers off um, with just a simple set of, of uh, materials and in this case I've chosen brights I love brights anyway that's just me so in these pencils you get gorgeous grape uh, coastal cabana granny apple green and flirty flamingo so there's four colors in there that work perfectly with brights they actually match for um, match with the cardstock and then there's some other colors that will coordinate with it as well so we're going to use these we're going to use this stamp set. We're going to use some Bright's cardstock, a Memento ink pad. And that's about it. A couple of um, just plain, basic, normal, boring stuff that we need, like blocks and glue and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, hi, hello, everybody. We've got Kat, we've got Ange, we've got Steph, we've got Marilyn, I can see on there. Jane, I think I also spotted. So, hi, hello and welcome. Thank you for coming and seeing me today. Let's have some fun, OK, because it's February and it's time for some fun because it's looking fairly miserable and moody out there today. <laughs> so if you're new to me here, oh, the squirrels just got, um, OK, I've just been distracted by a squirrel. Uh, I look, just glanced out my window and there's a squirrel on the bird feeder. Typical. Um, honestly, still, we don't mind. Sean likes squirrels. So that's OK. <laughs> so if you're new to me today, uh, my Moody Monday pick me up videos are all about cheering you up on a Monday because Mondays are fairly moody, especially if you have to go to work. And, you know, by lunchtime, you're like, oh, it's a long week already and it's only Monday lunchtime. So <laughs> um, so my Moody Mondays are about cheering us all up and having some fun on a Monday. Hi, Margaret. Nice to see you. So everybody joins in we have lots of comments so please if you're new here today please feel free comment away say hello tell us where you're from we always love to meet new people and um yeah just we're just going to have some fun with snail mail so or well, snailed it is the name of the actual uh, stamp set but it comes from a part of a suite um in stamp out we have collections called suites which are where we they put certain products together and turn it into a gorgeous suite i'm going to show you the rest of the suite later okay so we'll hold on for that and we'll do a bit more with the other parts of the suite for those people who are not necessarily new to card making hi sue but this is um this is just a, a good sort of getting you started so here are the colors 
in cardstock that match oh, aren't they just gorgeous look at that it's my favorite gorgeous great um lovely colors that go together and i just thought you know what they would work for snails wouldn't they anything anything works for snails i figure so we're going to start um and when i start i always show people how to cut their cardstock and i have two ways of cutting cardstock depending on whether you want to have a as I call it, an uppy downy card, standy uppy card, or whether you want to have a book fold card. This is technically it's a tent fold, but I only do mine like this because they show up better on photographs. OK, so if you don't like this way of doing stuff, you just do a book fold and I'll show you book fold in a minute so that we've got some of each. Um, but that is uh, just how I cut my cardstock for my standy uppy cards uh let's go with a coastal cabana so they have lovely names these things so this is going to cut at ten and a half so this is just an ordinary sheet of a4 uh cardstock okay and this is what i call the long edge this is what i call the short edge uh you could call it portrait you could call it landscape but i just call it short and long because i just find it easier so i put it with my short edge to the top of my trimmer cut it ten and a half centimeters then I turn it round and I score the long edge at 14.9 centimetres, just before the 14.9 mark there. OK, and then that gives me a nice tent fold card, which folds and looks like that. OK, so it folds up like that. So that's what I call my stand yuppie card, because when it stands, it stands up like that. OK, as opposed to a book fold, we will cut a book fold. Let's do a flirty flamingo, one of those fab names. Flirty flamingo. This time you just do it the other way around. So you put the long edge in and this time you cut just, just before that 14.9 centimetre. Okay, and then you do exactly the same. You turn it around, but this time you score at the same as what the other cutting was, which was 10 and a half. So see, you just have to remember 10 and a half and 14.9 and you've got them both. Alison's finally managed to haul herself into the craft room this morning and Jane's got some nuts as well. <laughs> I mean, some squirrels on her nuts as well. <laughs> yeah, squirrels and nuts today it all seems to be pretty, pretty much the same. OK, so now we have some card bases and I'm going to use my bone folder and just give them a good burnish. I like to give mine a good burnish because no matter how good your, your creasing is and your scoring is, it's always better if you burnish them. Um, and a lot of people say to me, I don't understand what burnish means. Burnish just means running your bone folder up and down the crease like that to just burnish that edge. OK, and you can do both sides and really get it nice and and it just gives it much more of a crispness. And that's what helps my cards to stand up. People go, oh, my cards don't stand up. If you give them a good burnish, preferably before you've put anything else on them, then that would be good. Um, did you know you can use the guillotine to make a fold? Hey, hi, hi. <laughs> um, I didn't know you could use a guillotine to make a fold. We don't have a guillotine, so I use my um, stamping trimmer, which has both of them on it, Jade. So I don't need to have a different thingy. But no, I didn't know that. Um, OK, so that's the basic basics, if you like. Should we do another one? Should we do another granny apple green one just so that we've got one of each? Let's do that. So again, long edge to the top, just before 14.9, cut, tan. <laughs> You've got to learn a new word today, Jane. <laughs> Jane says she's learned a new word today, burnish. I know, it's a lovely word. <laughs> it, it feels like it's a burnish, do you know what I mean? It feels like, it feels like, uh, like what it says. <laughs> ah, there we go. Excellent. So that's what we do there. OK, so that's that. And then what I always try and do is I also try and cut at the same time the paper that I'm going to use um, on the front of my cards. And I will do some layering as well. So I'm going to take one piece of Whisper White cardstock and we're going to cut that. Now, I'm going to try something today. Someone said to me, why don't you do 14 and a half? And I said, it doesn't it doesn't sit right. I use 14.4, but I'm going to try 14 and a half. You can tell me what you think. OK, so let's try 14 and a half. Uh, oh, Bev says her box has arrived. Yay, 14 and a half by 10. Now you tell me whether that looks better 
looks okay on that. She doesn't look too bad on that. I don't know, does it look alright on this one? Nope, no, hang on. Does it look alright on that one? Mm, see, it's not quite right. It doesn't seem quite right to me. It seems like it's too... It's too short on the others. Anyway, I always cut my cardstock to 14.4. That's why I'm saying that. 14.4, chop that end bit off, and then by 10. Because that's half a centimetre down from, from the top. That's a little tight there. That hasn't cut very well. No, it's, it's okay. It's good. So I just think 14.4 makes it, yeah, see, it makes all the difference. Now you have an even border all the way around, yeah? Whereas 14.5, it's not even, and that would drive me nuts. However, if you find it easier to, to go down in half centimetres, then you could do that if you wanted to, but I'm not, I'm not, not going to do that. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it looks better with 14.4. Okay, so let's just chop. I'm going to chop this one down to the next size down. That's 13.9 by 9.5, okay? And that will then give you a wider border all the way around, like that. Or even give you the ability to put another piece of cardstock behind that. So, for example, if I took a piece of um, Gorgeous Grape and cut that to 14.4 and then cut it down to 10, that means that you can put that... Oh, I'm glad you're all agreeing with me. I like that. Yes, yeah, see, it's better at 14.4. It's just an OCD thing, and card makers are a little bit OCD sometimes. See, that gives you a nice two-step layering then. Okay. Uh, it's not a pack, but I'm going to um, I'm going to create a code which will turn it into a pack, where it will be a pack of cardstock and a pack of white and the watercolour pencils and the stamp set and the ink pads so that you can do everything that I show. You just need to add a trimmer, or if you have a guillotine, you can use your own guillotine. That's fine. But I just wanted to show you what you can do with just a few bits of cardstock um, and in the pack of cardstock you actually get 24 sheets so you could make a lot of cards with 24 sheets so um, yes it's going to basically be a kit that I'm going to put together which will be fun so ignore me for a moment while I just cut some more some extra ones anyone got any questions at this at this point um, I don't know whether we have any other people who are like a little bit scared about card making or, you know, sometimes they get a bit confused with measurements and stuff. If so, shout and we can help you. OK, so I'm going to also use my other half of my cardstock and I'm going to make that into some 14.4 bases. Okay, just some layers that we can use because it's always good to have layers. So I'm going to show you some really basic cards. Then bear with me. I'm going to show you some stepped up versions. And then we'll go on to some versions where for people who have die cutting machines and stuff like that. So I'm going to try and show you how it all can all build together and build it up depending on your level of crafting. Okay, so let us start with this one. I'll just put all the pretty stuff so we can see the pretty stuff. Hi Marion, how are you? Oh. <laughs> oh, you oh no, you had your Covid jab on Saturday and you feel rubbish. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, hopefully it'll make you feel better. So you'll feel better soon. Um, at least that way you know that you're safe and you're being, you, you know, you're on the, you're on a good path. So let's, let's stick with that thought, shall we, for the moment. But I hope you feel better. And don't ever apologise for not ordering stuff yet. That's entirely up to you whenever you order, okay? There's no... I'm not going to push anybody. <laughs> okay? So don't panic. Um, you order when you're good and ready, my lovely. All right. So now I've got a lot of blocks, but you don't need to have a lot of blocks. You just need to be able to clean them in between. Okay? And normally I would clean mine with my chamois. But I forgot to put my chamois in the, in the sink again. Why do I keep doing that? I keep forgetting to put my chamois in the sink, uh, which means that it's not actually ready for use at the moment. Silly Billy. Pop that one there. Um, so I'm going to just put all mine on lots of different blocks. So just ignore the fact that I have lots of blocks. Normally I would clean them with my chamois, but I've got a scrub, so I'm going to clean them with my scrub, okay, if I need to. In the meantime, I'm just loading them all up. 
Okay, so if you buy a kit, a normal kit, like an all-inclusive kit, you will have one block already. Normally, it's around a D-size um, D size block. So you might already have a block already, but you can add to them, as you can see, lots of different sizes. And it's important to have different sizes because if you have a very small stamp like that, okay, and you put it on a very big block like this, then the chances are when you try and ink it, you will rock your block and you'll get ink all over the block and then that transfers to your fingers and all over your cardstock so having the right size block is actually way more important than people realize okay now I only have one ink with me today and I'm going to just use because I just want to show you how nice you can make something look with just basic black okay so this is our memento ink and it is black but you can just stamp your cute little snails and this one's going to go on just as it is and you've got mail and then we'll just put some little okay so this is like a, a little a little um love card <laughs> And so that's, um, oh, we've got a net on from Queensland, Australia. And yes, Beverly Inky Fingers. So um, hi, everybody. So yes, yeah, so that's just three stamps. And already you've got like quite a cute little picture building up of how this might look. So then deciding on what you're going to put it onto. Uh, I want to put it onto my gorgeous grape, obviously, uh, with my flirty, I think. Don't you think that looks nice, doesn't it? And then we're just going to get some colouring started. And everyone's like, oh, watercolour pencils. I'm really scared of watercolouring. Uh, we're not going to do any watercolouring. We're just going to do colouring. And that's really easy to do. <laughs> because we've all done it at school. And we've all done it at, with the kids uh, and various other things. So in here, you just have your gorgeous grape colour and your flirty flamingo. And then we've got granny apple green. And this is coastal cabana. And then we've got these additional stuff, which is quite handy because we've got like a crushed curry, which is a dark yellow. And then we've got Cajun craze, which is like a brown. So that's kind of useful. So I always like a brown or a green for um, just making sure that they're actually on the ground. So I would just sort of go along the bottom here, just put a little bit of grass, just a wavy line. And she can have a little bit of grass under here. Just, you know, she's grounded. Otherwise, they're kind of floating. And I they don't even have to be floating at the same level. You just have to, you know, make sure that they've got a little bit of grass under them so that they, they feel sort of grounded. That's always a good thing. And then we will put some... Let's have a look. Let's, let's just do a little bit of colouring. I'm just doing little circles around the shell. Because they don't even have to be... Like it doesn't have to be perfect colouring either because there's almost cartoony images anyway. So um, doing something that's not quite real will get, will match. OK, so if I take this up and I show you, see, I've just done sort of squirrely, squiggly bits, but it still looks good. Yeah, I know they are so cute. So he's that. And obviously she's going to be in purple and she might need to have she might need to have like pink lashes, I think. We'll give her some pink lashes and then she can have pink pink stripes on her shell and i'm not being ultra careful i'm just coloring in and if you sort of go back over it again it gets deeper i'm not going for any fancy coloring i'm not going to try and make this have a like a 3D super effecty kind of thing. This is for people who've never made cards before, um, or for those of us who'd like to cheat and just do simple stuff, right? Because this is quick and easy and doesn't take an hour and a half to colour in one shell to make it look like it's got 3D going on. Okay, there we go. And then we can do some Coastal Cabana on the presents. And again, I'm just sort of squiggling it. I actually think lines are the hardest thing to do if you just do lines. But if you do sort of squirrely lines, as I call them, so lines and then you go over with a circular motion, then they come out okay. 
and then this one's going to be in green again go over with the circular motion and yes we can get very technical with you know making it all perfect but I quite like it like this I'm not going to do the body I'm just going to add a pink heart because you know all hearts are pink and we're going to make this heart pink too now sometimes you'll find a pencil that doesn't color as well as another one and what that needs is it just needs a piece of scrap paper what have I got here oh I've got one of my inspire create share and I'm just going to take the top off the pencil you just you just have to like blunt it a little bit which is a, it's 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 a crude way of doing it but it works crude but effective just stops you getting that quite so harsh a line okay you need to get it down a bit sort of wear it in like the brakes there we go so now we have our little heart two hearts and a, some colorful snails and i think that's got to be the simplest card that you could possibly make bit of glue i like wet glue but I, we also do seal which is a i'll show you seal in a second so this is wet glue the reason why i like wet glue wiggle room if you put it down and it's not straight like that you can move it because it's wet so you can move it and you have wiggle room okay whereas with seal it's a little harder so seal is like this it's like a tape runner um and seal just oh see and sometimes it doesn't do it doesn't come off However, I've learned apparently a new technique which is supposed to work wonders. So I'm going to try that. Get your little silicone mat and start. Oh, look at that. Just rolls it perfectly. Just brings the seal back to the, to, to the start perfectly. So that's a good. And then it's just on here and you just roll it off. Isn't that easy? That's so easy. So if you struggle with your seal, grab a silicone mat. Okay. Right. So there we go. Pop that on there. And there we have our first card of the day. Got mail. <laughs> I like that. You like that? Give me some love and tell me if you like it. And uh, if there's anybody that you know out there who might be interested in creating cards like this, please do share my video with people because you never know who's a card maker without realising it. <laughs> uh, they might not know that they're a card maker yet. Okay, let's go on to card number two so let's do let's do a standy uppy card now is this a big this is a big card with just we'll just do that without any bits down it now for this one we are going to do uh what was the silicon mat made for originally um it's a brilliant thing uh you can use it for your um embossing so if you want to do any heat embossing if you want to do any uh use for the wet glue um what's it called it's right in front of me the fine tip glue pen you can drop it on and turn it into epoxy resin epoxy droplets um you can use it for all kinds of techniques we've used it for lots and lots of techniques um with um watercoloring and smushing and all that kind of stuff so it's it's and it's also good if you've got a heat tool and you want to do embossing it um, keeps your surface safe um but it's a really good hack for using it with your seal thank you elise thank you i'm glad you think it's a cute card i do too um so now we're going to try and do a little bit of a offset stamping again this is great for people who are starting out because you know you don't know if you're going to be able to stamp straight when you first stamp and and sometimes you can't and that's okay because if you make a card where you don't have to stamp straight then you don't need to worry about it so i'm going to start off in the middle with happy mail enclosed and then I'm going to take this and now see I'm going to go off here so I might even use my silicon mat for this as well because it works for this too a bit like grid paper um, it just enables you to go off without actually getting it all over your desk <laughs> which is good and I'll probably need it at the top as well so I'm creating like a border 
of Happy Mail enclosed. There we go, like so. Like so. Now, it is on your silicone mat, so you will need to just wipe that off with your chamois or something like that when you get there. Okay. So that's our border, which we can now do some colour. <laughs> Angela says she could, still can't stamp straight. Well, the Stamparatus is great for that, Ange. Um, we need to do more of that, I guess. More practice with that, maybe. Yes? Maybe we should do some more of that at some point. And then you can decide whether to add in a snail. You could easily fit one of the big snails down there. Um, or you could add in the mushrooms, like so. Uh, or you could just put in the word hello. But I like the snail. So I don't think... I don't think we need this one because it says you've got mail and it already says a lot of happy mail here. So I wouldn't necessarily do that one. OK, one of these will do. We'll do some more Stamparatus stuff just for you, Ange. OK, and for anyone else out there who likes the Stamparatus. So we'll pop her down there. Now, you could just leave this as black and white. There's no actual requirement to add colour, especially if you're having a very bright background. So you could, if you wanted to, just pop that straight on there and that would be a lovely card just as it is. OK, if you wanted to put some colour on it, I would suggest that you just pick up the colour from the background and almost do it as a monochromatic um, well, that sounded very posh, but as a, <laughs> as a basically a single colour is what I'm trying to say, a single colour card. OK, so for this one, what I might do is I might just pick up the parcels and just go straight in just with some Coastal Cabana on the parcels. Now, the good thing is that with the Brights pack, you get 10 different colours that you can play with. OK, so there's bound to be your colour that you like, um, even if the pencils don't quite match. You know that it will match with all the other cardstock, so you could just do a black and white version with the colour that you like. Do you see what I mean? There we go. Another card. Done. How simple is that? I mean, that's really simple, right? And I don't put too much of this stuff on because it is actually very sticky. It's much stickier than our old snail used to be, which I like. Um, but I have to think a little bit more closely about when I put it down because it doesn't move. <laughs> there we go. You can peel it off, but it doesn't come off as well as, you know, whatever. So card number two. Very quick, very easy, great for somebody who's just getting started. So now you've got two cards. So next, let's try, what else have we got? We've got a purple base, an inner, and is this a pink liner? That's just sort of the opposite way round. What else have we got here? We've got a green base and a purple liner. No, not a purple liner. That's just an extra piece. Okay. So we could do green, how about green and pink? I know it's a bit like, whoa, but actually it works quite nicely, doesn't it? I think that's quite a nice combo. So for this one, so this is what I call a book fold, just saying. So you can have it this way round, okay, or you can have it this way round. I do mine this way round purely for photography purposes. And when I do my cards that are like look like this, I do them this way, again, just for just for the photographing of it but you could make them like this and that works just as far just fine okay just wanted to clear that up so i like the mushrooms we're going to do something with the mushrooms on the green background so we will put the mushrooms here okay and you can see i'm really smushing my um memento down because it's a felt pad it's not a um, it's not a foam pad, so you can be a little bit more harsh with it. And then leave that to dry for a second. And then I'm just going to put the message hello just sort of in the middle. Again, not really taking much effort with placement. Again, very, very plain. We'll come back to that in a second. So you need to let the ink dry a little bit because obviously it is still an ink. 
and you're about to squish all over it with pencils so you do need to let it dry a little bit then I'm coming in with my granny apple green and like on the other one this one needs to have some background to it okay and we'll put the leaves in green hope I'm not shaking you too badly but when you colour it it tends to shake my desk I must get a clamp Sean and I have been looking at trying to work out how on earth to get my whole kind of camera set up and everything so it's not actually attached to my desk but it requires me moving the entire the entire set that set up to another place in the in the room and I just don't have enough space to do that. <laughs> um, I've got to get rid of a load of stuff first before I can do that so speaking of which I might be having a little bit of a like a what can we call it might have a little bit of a garage sale but online <laughs> might be having a bit of a bit of a sale going at some point soon so just be aware of that I've got loads of stuff that I need to free up space in my craft room for from okay now I'm going to take the same green and I'm just going to underline my hello about halfway up and just a little bit below and that sort of cements the yeah, the hello there and adds a little bit of uh, colour to it. So I don't know if you can if you're seeing this. Can you see that? So just a little bit of green under the hello sort of makes that a bit brighter. Now this is going with pink. So we're going to add pink to our um, mushroom. So sort of going round. With a few lines on this one and then just to sort of follow the shape of the mushroom and then we will add a little bit more in texture wise so just trying to get myself around those uh, circles but without being too obvious about it there we go okay now we're really going to color this one I want it as bright a pink as I can get. You can brighten up the pink if you add water, but we don't want to add water to this cardstock because this cardstock is not designed to work with water. We have a very specialised cardstock called fluid cardstock, which funnily enough, as the name suggests, works with fluids. So <laughs> that's the one you want to use if you're going to use it with, with water. This one, not so much. Now I do have a little bit of a sneaky thing that we can use uh, with it that actually is quite good for a new card maker to get as sort of like an add-on if you like a bit of sparkle and shimmer. So we will talk about that in a second but I just want to do it to start off with just plain. Are you all still there with me? Am I still cheering you up on your moody Monday? What do you think? Do you ever use, do you use watercolour pencils? What have you used them on recently? Anyone? And then I'm just under here going to go in a bit lighter with the pink. So it's got a bit of pink shading underneath. See how easy that that colouring was. I mean it, it, it was nothing special, nothing tricky. Okay. Yes, Susan says. So I'm assuming that's a yes, you like the watercolour pencils and yes you've used them recently I'm going to make this one Coastal Cabana because I'm loving this <laughs> I actually do know that Sue likes her watercolour stuff so that's a bit of a trick question asking her that there we go and then again just like a little shadowy bit underneath inside last but not least we have this little sucker down here uh, so we're going to go in with gorgeous great obviously because those are the colors that we're using and because they're bright so we know they'll work with anything so this image with this colorway will now work with anything flirty flamingo anything uh, color um, Coastal Cabana, anything gorgeous, great. You've only used them on the kit that they came with. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, ha the, ha the 
oh what was that one oh happy day or something like that yeah that was um that was a good one that was a good kit and had a lot of watercoloring in and you got some great colors in that kit actually so you should you can definitely pick them up and use them again jane definitely okay so how are you all doing oh hi louisa nice to see you we're just doing some very basic cards for new beginners uh which i actually think are turning out i have to say i do like simple cards you know me guys you know i like my simple cards uh but i think that even for someone who likes more complicated cards you can look at these and go mm, actually they're okay they're not too bad um even for somebody you know you could tart them up if you're an avid card maker and you've got loads of stash and you want to add bling and this that and the other you can absolutely do that but if you're just starting i hope that what i'm showing you here is that this is actually really simple and these are great for you know kids cards mum's cards birthday cards for your girlfriends um romantic cards valentine's day is coming up so you know you could do it for that too you could make them into uh, little notes and thank you cards if you run a business and you wanted to do thank you cards or if you wanted to do cards for your friends just to say thank you or hope you're feeling okay so especially in times like this so there we go so that's our three cards so far what do we think we like i like so we've got one more to go then i'm going to move on to some more complicated stuff okay um for sort of stepping it up a level so let's do i want to, i think i want to chop this one down though and i want to do a coastal cabana um, thing so let me get my trimmer back out meanwhile you can tell me which is your favorite so far which one do you like so far the best <laughs> jane likes them all i like that if you haven't got a favorite that's fine <laughs> yes sweet i think that's a good name that's a good word for it actually they are sweet cards yeah that's exactly what they are okay so i'm going to cut this at 14.4 you probably can't see what i'm doing but that's what i'm doing 14.4 by 10 remember to give me that first layer and then i'm going to chop this one down make this one 13.9 by nine and a half which gives me my second layer lisa likes them Thank you, honey. Okay. I actually really like the mushroom one. Sean's going to love that. <laughs> okay, so now this final one here in this set of four is going to have gorgeous grape with coastal cabana. Oh, look, I'm getting loads of hearts. Oh, thank you, guys. Um, with a white front. Now, you can make them different sizes but i think when you're just starting out it's really nice to have some real basic layers that you're going to use over and over and anyone who knows me knows that i use these exact same layers over and over and over again all the time so you're not it's not like i'm teaching you something that's like it's really basic and you're never going to use it again i use these same measurements all the time so don't be put off thinking oh it's just like new stuff and i'm never you know it's not going to be um it's not going to be useful when i get further along it certainly is so for this one we're going to do a uh, lovely lovely sylvia snail i don't know why i'm calling her sylvia but she just looks like a sylvia to me <laughs> i don't know she's i don't know what her real name is i wonder if they named them i don't know she's sylvia to me i think uh, and then I'm going to put you snailed it just sort of anywhere it doesn't have to be straight because the writing is nice and sort of funky so that's good and then just as a sort of a little a little sort of border I'm going to do a couple of little hearts but more sort of like friendship hearts rather than love hearts you know what I mean she's just saying that you snailed it now this is a nice layout to follow where you start one corner and work towards the other or you start at the top and you work down it balances the eye it makes it look nice so that's also a good thing to learn but we want the you snailed it to be really bright and bold so i'm going to um go over that again like i did before with the with the hello but we're going to go all over this 
so we're going to make this into a real bright hey you snailed it and again it's a very simple way of highlighting we've done this before with blends which are our alcohol markers but you can do it just as easily with these okay and that really brightens that up <laughs> they are cartoony yes they are oh you like them paula oh hi i didn't know you were on hello <laughs> yes so they are cute and cartoony exactly and i like that about them i think that's great now for this one i'm going to um did i color that one in i did this one i'm going to color in a little bit more and i'm going to leave those little lines white so it's a little bit more defined so to do that we need to color the whole of this bit in And I do tend to go a bit quiet when I'm colouring, but that's okay. I'm sure you can understand why, because I'm concentrating. My tongue's probably sticking out. <laughs> Sometimes I'm glad that you don't have a camera that can see my face while I'm doing this, because I'm sure I pull strange faces when I craft. <laughs> And the good thing is that if it looks a little mottled, it's a shell, so that's okay. Mottling is good. Okay. <laughs> you like the mushrooms? Yeah, the mushrooms are so cute. And of course the paper's got more mushrooms in it. We'll come to that in a sec. I'm having a lot of fun just doing the simple cards, but we will do some more complex. I've got loads of stuff to show you, so don't don't go anywhere. We've got more to come. and at the end of this i'm going to do another giveaway so hang on and if you're around at the end i will be giving away a card i don't know which one yet there's lots of them possible to give away We've still got my fancy fold to come there we go. okay so she's got a nice purple shell now she does need to have some ground so we are going to go and just pop a little bit of green down there but i don't think that's going to be a I think that's okay because it matches again with the colour scheme even though it's not a colour on the card and we're going to we're going to add some coastal uh, no what's this flirty flamingo flirty flamingo just on the bow and then just a little bit sort of at the side of the hearts so you're not really colouring it you're almost sort of outlining it inside so you're doing like a secondary outline just very lightly on the inside of the heart this would be great to somebody who actually achieved something i've got loads of people who are doing like marathons at home and um are going to walk 900 miles or something in in their living room or whatever so that would be great for somebody who did one of those okay or raise a load of money for charity <laughs> or something like that you know by doing some silly things at home or whatever this would be a great card for somebody like that you just nailed it i like the ones where they've got um like puns with the stamps i like that sometimes i feel cards can be a little bit too serious i like the funny ones there we go so that in what's the time it's quarter past one we might be going a bit long today um but that in like 45 minutes including me talking and waffling at the beginning about how to cut your cardstock is four cards which anyone can make i think don't you think and i think they are cute so pretty <laughs> And just with a set of, um, you know, real, real small set of supplies, one pack of cardstock, one pack of white cardstock, one pack of pencils, an ink pad and a stamp set. You can't really get much more basic than that. You know, you just literally just need that and some glue and the, and the cardstock that makes these. And, and that's it. So I will put a link up that will purchase all of that as a kit. Uh, because I know there are probably a couple of people who look at that and go, actually, I could make those. 
and I just want all of that that Pip did. So if you want all of that that Pip did, I'll put a link into this video after it's pasted. OK, so that is for that's with the Brights cardstock and those watercolour pencils. Now I'm going to shift a little bit and um, yeah, plus the blocks. That's true. You'll need a block. But I mean, you could get away with just the one block if you were careful with your hearts and your hello, because everything else would be big enough to go on a D block. So as long as you were careful, I might put an A block in there. But apart from that, you're pretty much done. So there are some basics. So on my new to card making page that's on my new website, there is a section that talks about just the essentials that you need for the blocks and the glue and the trimmer. OK, so you have a look at that. You can have a look at that and that will tell you the basics. And then there's the additional things that you would need to make this. OK, so now we're going to have a look at this in the suite and how you could take some of these and just sort of upscale them a little bit. So if you wanted to look at it from, again, a new card maker who doesn't have a die cutting machine. OK, so if you don't have a die cutting machine, but you love it and you want to do a little bit more. Then this is the suite as it appears. Now, if you are an avid, avid crafter and you want to do all this stuff with all the letter boxes and the mail coming out and all the really exciting stuff. OK, then you just buy the whole suite and you choose this number down here at £65 and you get the whole lot, which actually isn't bad for stamp set, die set, resin hearts twine and paper but obviously you need to add your cardstock your inks and all that kind of stuff in okay so that's why that's for an avid crafter someone who's got lots but supposing you're halfway between so you love the snail dip you're not you have a few extra bits you might have a punch or you might like a punch okay so maybe you want the punch and you want some some of these good things but you don't have a die you don't have a die cutting machine then these are the next set of cards that I've got to show you. And there's a lot. <laughs> uh, I went a little bit crazy with these. Yeah, you'll, you'll understand why. Uh, so again, using exactly the same materials in terms of the bright cardstock. This time I changed up and wanted to use the paper. Exactly. So I wanted to use the paper and I thought I'll add the punch. Because this punch punches out this shape here. OK, it also punches out this little snail here, too. So let me show you. So without the dies, um, but with the rest of the suite and this time I use the other set of watercolour pencils. So I use the bigger set. This is the original original set. OK, because again, it does still have brights in there. It has Daffodil Delight, real, uh, not real red, Daffodil Delight, uh, Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point and melon mambo and is there one other no that's it so it has the it has again one two three four of the bright colors in it so again with the brights cardstock it would work but i wanted to use it with the papers so i decided to just use um the daffodil delight the bermuda bay and real red i added real red because even though it's not brights in the cards in the in the actual cardstock pack it is bright it is in the paper pack okay so the paper pack that i'm talking about is this set of papers there's 12 by 12 papers so they are huge there you get lots of them you get 12 12 sheets and you get different designs so you get this little puppy now if you have the dies and you have a die cutter machine he can be cut out with the dies okay then on the back of that page is the lovely squiggly stuff. Then you've got this entire row of snails, which is just hilarious. And then on the back of that, you've got some zizzy lines. You've got a whole page of hearts. And on the back of that one, massive mushrooms. OK, if you love mushrooms, that's the paper for you. This one's got lots of stamp shapes. And on the back of that, it's got lots of packages and parcels being delivered and sent. This has got sort of like a woo snail lines, snail trails. And on the back of that, you have this gorgeous little fella, but also this one. And this one can also be cut out with the dies, as can these envelopes. OK. 
and then you get a whole sheet of hellos and bourgeois and again these can be cut out with the die and then on the back there is more mushrooms okay so very bright very busy some of them um lots of people might think especially if you're new to card making wow what the heck do i do with that which is why i started without any papers okay that's why my first designs for you today were with no papers but if you're like actually i could cope i could add some paper and, and add that and jazz my cards up a little bit more then you could add the papers add the punch and make some cards like this so here i've used the punch cut it down a bit to make a little tag punch added in the bermuda bay ink pad um, kept the papers the same this is actually the i thought this was fluff but this is actually a piece of paper cut behind here to give a border okay so that's that uh, this one i used the punch and i punched out two images from the paper and one image from the stamp set and then colored in the little envelope to match the papers a couple of hearts and here's some of that combo twine this one again similar different layouts just using your cardstock in a little bit more complicated fashion uh, with different layers and a different and some more stamping this one very similar very simple this one but just some different colored ink and two two pieces of paper together uh, this one uses the punch this time i've actually stamped on the colored cardstock punched it out coloured in the little heart, added some twine, popped it on the card base. And this one I stamped using two coloured inks, punch the punch, split the punch behind so you get this border effect, and then just coloured in the little heart there. So that's another, if you just step it up a level and add some ink pads, the paper and the punch and a bit of twine, you can get this you could even leave the twine off if you wanted to and just have you know one two three four cards you could even leave the twine off that have five nice cards six nice cards without that okay so i think that gives you another sense of what you can do even if you don't have a die cutting machine and you're feeling a bit kind of left out because you think oh no i'm so I, you know I, i'm not i don't have i don't want to invest in a die cutting machine yet right it takes some people time to invest in a die cutting machine you've got to know that you really want to do this hobby um when you know you want to do this hobby and you let rip then fair enough or you need to save up money for your die cutting machine because it's not that you know the mini's helpful because now it's brought the price point down a little bit but it's still you know an investment so this way you can you can go from just very simple just a little bit of coloring yeah to okay let's get some fancy stuff going with some with some um punches and a bit of color okay so that's my next set all right then we go to the next layer <laughs> So now you've moved on completely. You've now succumbed and you've bought the dice, the die cutting machine and you want to make a card that's got everything on it. OK, well, I'm going to show you, um, first of all, a couple that I made the other week. OK, which again, they're not massively complicated, but they do use some die cuts. So here you can see I've cut out the, the images and then I've stamped that one. So not hugely complicated. Um, but then we have the opportunity to do some some more stuff so i'm going to make some more stuff now let's see I've, i'm not sure if i wanted to use a red background or a yellow background but i think i'm going to use red for this one so let us think about a card that um maybe is just a little bit different to what you um what you might have seen out there already so you need this is called um i got this from a friend of mine jackie in the in this one of jackie's friends in the states uh no in fact jackie herself and this is called uh she's calling it a postcard card okay because you're actually going to leave the blank it's going to be just a flat card so you just need half a piece of normal card okay so that's 
going to be 14.9 by 10 and a half okay then this piece is the next layer down 14.4 by 10 uh, and then this piece which I've already pre-cut I got wrong <laughs> because I did it this size and that's not right at all so you ignore that piece and we get another piece of real red so let me find a piece of real red somewhere in my here we go somewhere in my cardstock I must have a piece of real oh no there's no no real red there hold up there must be another one somewhere come on come on come on come on is that it no that's cherry cobbler See, this is another family of cardstock. So this is, here we go, here we go. This is the Regals. Uh, I'll put a link up for the wallets um, later on, guys. So these, this is the real red that matches that. Um, it needs to be the whole length, like 21 centimetres, so the whole width of your card. And let's see what I made the inside pieces to be. I can't remember now. And that's going to give me my measurements. So this is five. Yes, yeah, so six. So it needs to be six centimeters by the whole width of your card, and then it will be ten and a half to give you your center line. Okay. And we're going to do some die cutting, and we're going to do all kinds of different things. So. You need that piece and that's going to go top to bottom across that boat there okay then I've cut some other pieces out I've just turned this round so it's just the red oh I've cut it too small again of course I have because I cut it for the other piece didn't I Pip in fact maybe I'll go different maybe I'll go different <gasps> maybe I'll do mushrooms different colored mushrooms no I'm not sure not sure let's go back with what I had originally intended okay so let me get that back out so now we know that's 10 that's going to need changing to so we need to have a piece that's 10 in length and what did i do that six and a half or six six so five and a half like that okay and then i need a piece of whisper white no basic white even cardstock basic white pit basic white get the new terminology so that's too short see all because I cut the first piece wrong this is what happens when you cut the first piece wrong let's just get another piece out here here we go so this needs to be five and a half by ten okay because that's going to go in there so it's going to it's like a surprise card basically it's got a little bit of a surprise going on okay so fold this down here again it, although it's a different fold it's not exactly a complicated one okay but you can make them in so many different ways and with so many different suites of paper they're, they're just fantastic okay so that's that now i'm going to stamp on this one uh, should I do that one? No, I don't want to do that. I want to do the big one, like so. There we go. And I am going to use just Memento for this, but I'm going to switch up and use a different colour for my writing because, you know, we're switching it up a little bit now, right? So we'll pop her down there like that. I'm going to just wash my fur. There we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know I make you shake doing that. Um, just clean off my stamp. Grab my real red because we're all about the real red, really. And then in here, we'll have. Oops, you snailed it. A bit more juicy than the memento. You could see me being a little bit more careful with that. Okay. So let's pop that down over there, get most of the red off so I don't get it all over myself. So this is going to go on the inside of this piece. 
Okay, so this is going to go in here. So it's like a little surprise message on the inside of that little flap. So, then we're going to decorate the outside. Now, I've already chopped various bits and pieces, but I do actually want to do some die cutting. So, I have die cut previously. First of all, the little envelope, which we'll do on a different thing. But I have die cut this snail. So I like him. He's kind of cute. This came off the paper. Okay, it's not the same one that you get when you die cut uh, the paper um, here. Here, because obviously this is not coloured in like that. I'm not saying my colouring in is that good. It's this piece of paper, and I've just die cut that out. Okay. So then, I want some more stuff. I want some more things from the die cut on there. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut a little envelope. So we're going to have like a, a card in a card in a card, if you see what I mean. And then I want to cut some mushrooms. And I'm tempted to even cut out the mushroom actually like stamped, but I'm not sure yet. So we'll just see. I think I might want to. I might want to cut this out. Do a bit of colouring again. Depends on how well he works with it as well. So we'll just see. And then the mushrooms I want to cut out. Um, I don't want to do them in red because they won't stand out very well. So I'm going to do them in um, Coastal Cabana, which matches with the colours on here. So let's get my little die cutting out. So this is the little mini cutter. So if you've not seen this before and you're like, what is she doing? This is what I mean by die cutting. OK, so this is my little getting very messy here. I need to make some space. Hold on. Um, this is my little stamping cut and emboss machine. And it cuts out by putting pressure on dies and creates and then die cuts them out on the cardstock. So you load your plates, your cardstock your dies I might do different colors of those I might do them again in a minute I'm just chucking them on there put your plates on push it through start winding hope that it winds through hold on I need to get it to catch no I haven't got my plates lined up properly hold on whoops I do find this when I've got card hanging over the edge. I didn't like it so much. Come on. Catch and come through. There we go. Once you get oh come on. Once you get going, you're normally fine. What's the matter with you? Why aren't you going? Hold on. Ooh. Okay. This is not working. Why is this not working? Maybe because I've got my plate upside down. I don't know why it's doing this. Let me chop this off. Always on live television, right? Or live whatever it is. It was working fine yesterday. There we go. There we go. You do have to stagger your plates. You can't have them you can't have them all in the same thing. And I think that's the thing. And maybe I've got them just caught. There we go. See? It's all in the staggering. There we go. And now suddenly it's making me look like I was just all fingers and thumbs for no reason. There we go. Whoops. Okay. There we go. So the dies just fall off, as you can tell, um, and leave behind these lovely little die cut images. Look, mushrooms. So cute. So we'll just bring them off there. It's a bit staticky because it's a plastic plate, so it gets a bit staticky. And then we're just going to do the same with my stamped image of my mushrooms. There we go. Put that on there. 
and you can see they just line up with the image and then as long as you don't move the plates and move your stamped image at the same time then when it comes out the other end it's 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 correct there we go just have to it's only a little machine so it doesn't have the weight of a big machine so sometimes it does take a little while just to get it going but then you can see it's cut out the little mushrooms there we go so let's have a look um was i going to do another i was going to do the envelope wasn't i so let's find a piece of paper and we will do the envelope but this one's not bad is that too wide a bit too wide how big do i need it for this so just because it's a little machine you just need to make sure that it's going to be the right size going through so we'll do that and do that just to get it so it's not too big you don't want it jamming the machine because the cardstock's overhanging and too big so we'll do that now i'm not actually going to see this one at the back here but i am going to see these two little fellas down here when i put my envelope together so that's the those are the ones that i'm concerned with keeping You've all gone really quiet on me, so I hope you're still there. <laughs> there we go. You're all just watching and eating your lunch. And then I'm going to take a little piece of cardstock and just... Oh, actually, I've already done one of these already, so that's okay. I can use this one. That's cool. Right, okay. So we don't need that anymore. Get rid of that. right so now now we get to start the fun oh you're just sorting the washing okay that's fine <laughs> you crack on sort the washing so now we're just going to fold our little envelope oops there's its fold line yeah no that's right fold our little envelope fold our little envelope fold our little envelope they'll tuck in underneath like that and then fold that little envelope down and look there we go it's a little envelope and if you just stick that together i would i recommend using a tiny amount of um glue so just a little dab there and then a little dab along one edge so you're going to stick that there and then just dab along the edge and then stick that there okay but just make sure that you hold it until it until it stays but it doesn't go you want you want a small enough amount so it doesn't go in underneath because you want to put the actual envelope in so here's an envelope i did earlier so true Peter peter fashion oh you just oh, bless you jane thank you <laughs> that's very kind of you to say that um so yes yeah, so we're going to do this and this is they're gonna think that this is it they're gonna think oh, okay that's that that's nice that's cute it's got a little hello and that's gonna sit in there and we can stick that on the top of our little fun piece but that's not all of it is it because we know there's more inside okay so we're gonna do this stick this on then i'll show you the one i made that wasn't right <laughs> Which is why I've had to change it because I I, I got the wrong size but pieces of cardstock. So I will show you my errors because I'm like that. You know, we all make mistakes sometimes, right? Uh, okay, so that's going to go on there. That's going to go on there. I do like these mushrooms because we can sort of hang it over a bit, and then we can have some we can have some mushrooms here, or I might just do these mushrooms. I don't know. What do you think? I'm kind of thinking just these mushrooms now. I think the other one's a bit big. If we're going to have the envelope on here as well, I think we'll just do these mushrooms. Thank you, Leslie. Hey, Jan. Oh, lots of people jumping on. Yeah, we've done like 10 cards already. <laughs> this is the last one we're up to. Okay, so let's do those mushrooms because they look cute, I think, like that. 
could probably have done with one being a different color but we'll just have to live with that i do have one but sadly it's in totally the wrong blue so i don't really want to do that because that's just the wrong blue but you know what i mean so <laughs> we will persevere so this one i'm going to put down flat yeah it's a bit busy isn't it really do you just think just the small ones do you think really just the small ones like this and this i think they're not too, I, th I don't think there's enough of them that's the problem so i think we need more but we'll try and work it so it's not looking so busy maybe we'll stick one on this other side that's better that's better okay so we're going to hang it slightly off but not too far off that we have glue all over this edge okay so just slightly off this one i'm going to add a little tiny mini stamping dimensional monday card mad i know oh you've been watching on oh on your big tv oh wow now i'm really glad that my face isn't on the screen so <laughs> if you've been watching it on your big tv that could be very scary now this just about fits but only just so just be be aware that it might stick out the side a little bit you might have to trim if you're worried about your about a bit of white showing through which to be fair i kind of am i don't want it to show through come on better. that's better okay so we'll put that one down there then we'll stick him up on normal dimensionals because he's big enough to have big ones okay like so and then he can go sort of here-ish like that and then i'm going to glue this to the top of the snail nobody will know i mean it won't look like it's glued to the top of the snail if you see what i mean but it will it will be but it will it'll look like he's just pushing through the undergrowth like so that's better isn't it that looks much better okay then we'll glue this to the top <laughs> yeah well it is about relaxing it is about having a a break from your lunchtime leslie that's the thing you've got to have a break from your lunchtime i want to put that at an angle i think this angle could be wrong but i'm going with that angle now you will need a piece of whisper white uh, basic white basic white pit basic white you will need a piece of basic white cardstock that fits on the back i have one i've sort of prepared earlier i think this might be a small piece but it'll fit because this is going to be where you actually write your scent your greeting and all that kind of stuff because it's a postcard it hasn't actually got anywhere at the moment for you to write anything so we'll put that on the back before we attach the rest of it there we go and then we glue this directly to the front like so so that it goes edge to edge with the card and it's straight it's got to be straight there we go okay hold that hold that hold that you can flip it up and make sure that it's straight there there we go so now you have a card and you think well that's great but it's flat isn't it like you see it's not because it's got this little thingy here so it does actually stand up on a mantelpiece like so <laughs> isn't that good so it does stand it stands pretty much like one of the normal cards would stand but but it's but it's not a normal card do you know what i mean it's because it's got this fluffy bit i loved it i thought jackie did a great job with that so i thought i would share that with you today so that's my more avid card because that's now taken what 20 minutes just to do one card and i'd already cut some of the pieces all right not most of them but some of the pieces <laughs> So, so see that you can go from very very basic which took us like half an hour to do four right the way through to complicated and um the thing that i like about it is as well is that everybody does everybody does um cards differently and so that's one that you know jackie uh, designed the fancy fold obviously i've designed the snail mail card itself she didn't do it in snail mail she used something completely different um but 
everybody does them differently and everybody chooses different things to show off and it depends um it just depends on what you want to do so there's that one then we did these ones which were the sort of stepped up simple versions for people who don't have a die cutting machine so we looked at these and then we went really back right to basics with these ones for someone who's just starting out and i think they're all great in different ways and then on top of that i have hopefully here where are they oh yes then there's the other ones i did the other week which were also die cut and then somewhere in my box what have i done with it i also had where are they here we go we did a team we did a team swap so on a team get together every time we have a new catalogue and we do a team swap and i got three cards with snailed it so in my team swap i've got lots of different ideas again for snailed it cards from other members of my team our team i should say it's not my team it's our team because loads of people contribute towards it it's not just me um and they've used things as well so like here's a little resin heart that you get as part of that suite so this one's by carol this one's by jane can tell it's jane she's got googly eyes uh, and this one's by claire yeah so it's nice to see the different things that people do all of these are avid crafters because they've all used the dart some of the dies or different dies that go with it but they're all lovely and our team is really good at doing sharing loads of stuff with each other so if you're looking for a lot of inspiration you don't have a team at the moment you want to you, you want to take the plunge maybe you want to get the mini um set or the whole suite or whatever then join our um team become a member of our community because it's a fun community to be a member of uh, and you get ongoing discount as well on the products which is even better so if you're interested in that come and talk to me as well uh, i'll put a i'll put a little comment up and if you're interested then please send me a message about you know becoming a member and getting some discount uh, and then you could get easily get to the point that you go from this to this within a few months i promise okay so there you go that is snail mail pretty much covered <laughs> oh, i'm glad you like it let's hear from everybody so we've got um leslie wants to case it marion says um you take far too long on one it just depends on its practice marion that's all it is it's just practice i promise you because i've been doing it a long time <laughs> so i i get used to just you know i have things in my head and i get used to just zipping through things um but when you when if you if you don't do it the way i do it every day um then it can take you it can take you um a little bit longer so i've sold lisa on the set good it is a fab set i'm glad um leslie can't get wait to get her set that's nice yes exactly so i'll put a post up about um there's three options basically there's kind of like a really beginner starting out option then there's sort of the middle option that doesn't use any of the dies but it uses the punch and then there's the go well get it all kind of stuff <laughs> and if you are of the go well get it all kind of stuff you should be thinking about joining um and becoming a member of our community because it's so much fun and you get discounts so that's really good Alrighty, so i think i've kind of done it um <laughs> lovely sweet set, sweet set of the snails please okay uh thank you thank you thank you everybody i'm so glad you've enjoyed it i will be giving away a card uh at the end of this i'm not sure which one but i'll be giving away a card at the end of this video so i need to somehow work out how i do that how do i do that live i don't know i've not done this before live on a on one of these things i need to go and get, pick a comment but i think i can only do that after i've posted the comment so what i'll do is i will pick um out of everybody who has commented on this at the end so if you um if you have commented after all of this lot shows up i'll see that on the comments and i will pick a winner and i will ask you for your mailing address if i don't already have it and i will send you a card in the post how's that uh so thank you ever so much for watching uh take care i hope i've picked up your moody monday and turned it into a little bit brighter of an afternoon and i will see you again same place same time next week here queenpipcards.com and on my facebook page queenpipcards so thank you so much for being a part of my monday i've had a blast 
and I will see you again soon. Take care for now. Bye.